Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today starts right now. Good morning. It's 7 o'clock. I'm Grant Herms. And I'm Priya Mann. Thanks for joining us for Local 4 News Today. You know, weather like this kind of reminds me a little bit, gets me in the mood for... I'm, I mean, I, can you guess what I'm going to yeah, say? Yeah, but don't don't say it yet because no, I don't, don't want to jinx it. No, but, I was going to say a pumpkin spice latte. A pumpkin spice latte yeah, already. It just it's, gets me thinking about it. Just thinking about it. Right? Just, just yeah, maybe just a fragrance the air and of it. smell every yeah, now and then. It's right. Step by step. Huh, right. Kim, are you a pumpkin spice fan? It can't just be me. Absolutely, but <laughs> not in August. <laughs> How about an iced version? <laughs> oh, but no, there you go. That's a nice compromise. Okay. Isn't it? Okay. Yeah. All right. August is the Sunday of summer, as we said earlier. We have uh, mostly cloudy skies this morning, but there are a few showers down to our south and west. I'm going to take you in here. You can see that we are, for the most part, dry in Metro Detroit, but. As we head over to Monroe, there's a few showers also in Tecumseh, and I'll zoom in just a little bit closer for you here so you can take a look. This is the only place right now getting rain. This is our exact track 40 radar, so we can zoom in quite close. In fact, street level in some spots. Dundee getting a sprinkle right now. Same thing in Adrian. But for the most part, we are dry here in Metro Detroit, and we're going to stay that way through the majority of the day. Right now in downtown Detroit, it is 65 degrees, 59 in Ann Arbor, 61 in Port Huron, and 59 in Adrian. Temperatures across the board in the low 60s, except for Ann Arbor that just dropped down to 59 degrees, but otherwise it looks like it is going to be a cloudy day with temperatures about 10 degrees below average. But don't get out that pumpkin spice just yet because those temps are going up as we head toward the rest of the week. Your forecast is straight ahead. All right, thank you, Kim. Well, it is a water problem that's affecting thousands, and it could take weeks to fix in some areas. A large pipe that burst, causing a drop in water pressure in several Metro Detroit communities. And this morning, more than a dozen communities remain under a precautionary boil water advisory. It began Saturday morning with 23 communities and nearly 1 million people affected by the break. That number cut down to 13 by yesterday afternoon. The Great Lakes Water Authority says now about 288,000 people are affected and should continue to boil water before drinking it. And late yesterday, Governor Whitmer activated the state's emergency operations center to respond to the break. Megan Woods has more for us this morning. Here in Romeo, the industrial park is the only part of the village that's under that boil water advisory. The downtown area businesses and residential areas get their water from somewhere else, and that's the key here. It differs from community to community. Just 25 minutes from here in Rochester, there was a point that entire neighborhoods had to go without water. With this kind of size break, you're going to lose flow. You're going to lose pressure. A water main break on a 120 inch water main. Great Lakes Water Authority says it's the largest pipe in its system. That's why, out of precaution, they put out a boil water advisory for 23 communities. But within hours, that number dropped to 13. Uh, a lot of communities became proactive and started opening their emergency connections to other communities. After a closer look at water pressure data, those 10 communities didn't fall under the 20 PSI threshold. The city of Rochester is still on the advisory. For people like Melissa Larson, it started off as a minor inconvenience. That's not fun, but it's manageable and you can shower and you can cook because you can boil water and cook. And then this afternoon, people started saying I have no water at all. Now, Melissa and her neighbors aren't sure when their water will come back on. Another person in the neighborhood posted she's 35 weeks pregnant. I cannot imagine being 35 weeks pregnant and not having water. I can't imagine having an infant who needs formula and not having water. The city did provide cases of water, but because of the size of the main, GWLA expects it will take about two weeks to get everything back to normal. It is our intention to um, get the new pipe back in service as quickly as possible. While we're doing that, we're also we're trying to restore service. Late last night, Melissa's neighborhood was able to get some of their water back on, but it's still at a low pressure. And again, when you hear that two week timeline, there is a concern on how long can these communities last on their emergency line or how long can communities like Melissa's last on just bottled water? Those are answers we just don't have yet. In Romeo, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Hopefully answers we get very soon for a lot of people here. Absolutely, and we'll have the latest on Click on Detroit.
A man is formally charged for a deadly assault at the General Motors assembly plant in Orion Township. 48 year old Astrid Bushy is charged with murder for the death of 49 year old Gregory Robertson. It happened Thursday morning at GM's plant on Giddings Road. Investigators say both men were working together in a dock area when the attack happened. Robertson died of multiple blunt force injuries. Bushy remains in the Oakland County Jail. His next court date is August 23rd. Time now is 7.05 and charges are expected later this week in the stabbing death of a 55-year-old Hamtramck man. This is a follow-up to a story we first told you about Saturday morning. The victim was found on Belle Isle Friday night after the 17-year-old suspect walked into the Hamtramck Police Department and told police he'd killed someone on Belle Isle. After interviewing the teen, Michigan State Police found the victim's body. A Hamtramck resident we talked to said she's never heard of a story quite like this. You don't you just don't expect somebody to show up and say they killed somebody. I mean, even whether I guess he must have not been in his right mind. And she's lived right next to the police department for a dozen years. Troopers say they've recovered the knife believed to have been used in the attack, and they also say the teen and the victim knew one another. But at this point, police are not releasing any details about a possible motive. The 17 year old is being held at the Wayne County Juvenile Detention Facility. Detroit police need your help looking for three people accused of stealing a car at gunpoint. Police say three people stole a Chrysler 300 and money from a man back on July 27th. They say it happened in the area of Stansbury on the city's west side. We're told two women and a man worked together to steal a man's belongings. Anyone with information is asked to call Detroit police or Crime Stoppers anonymously at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Well, if you need to fill up your tank today, prices here at home have actually ticked up a little since this time yesterday. Prices here in Michigan are up a penny to $3.95 a gallon. That is still nine cents lower than this time last week. Prices here in Metro Detroit are also up by two cents since this time yesterday. Drivers here will be paying $3.99 a gallon.